We are hunting poachers with English foxhounds and they have backup. And now it's a different ball game, so they need to be trained to, to track humans. More dirty secrets from those filthy wildfowlers. Plus news, plus hunting YouTube, welcome to Field Sports Britain. For centuries, the English foxhound has been bred to hunt the English red fox. Now, in the 21st century, they have a new quarry to pursue, the African poacher. Every day, rhinos are killed for their horns in the Kruger National Park. The rangers need to be creative to stay one step ahead. The foxhounds are part of this new dog unit at the Southern African Wildlife College, which sits within the park. The college has been training field guides, professional hunters and rangers since 1996. We're here thanks to Aimpoint and its president, Lennart Ljungfeldt. No one wants to be chased by dogs. That's for sure. Aimpoint has been supporting the college for years. This is not about something which is a quick fix. This is something that we have to think through and we have to realize that it takes effort from one generation to the other generation to make it possible for other people in 50 or 100 years to be standing here and have the view that we have this evening. One of the college's most famous lecturers is Dr. Kevin Robertson, author of the best-selling The Perfect Shot, about shot placement for African game. We will hear more about the work being done here in our new show, Field Sports Africa. But first, Dr. Robertson is going to explain how this multi-breed task force is going to track down and tackle the poachers. It's an absolutely new initiative. It was started by Richard Sari, the, the, the section ranger here. This is Holly's initiative, so the dogs are very much in the training process and they have to be taught how to track humans. Initially, I suppose, in their genes of these dogs to track foxes or the, the blue ticks come from, uh, from the States. So that could be hunting cougars or bears or whatever they use them for in the States. So now it's a different ball game. So they need to be trained to, to track humans. Basically, there are four breeds. We have a blue ticks, foxhounds. We have German short-head pointers. Melanoirs to put a bit of aggression into the pack and then we have two uh, beagles as well. And beagles are just detection dogs. Just like you'd have a dog that would be at the airport sniffing for explosives or, or something illegal. You put a banana crate on top of the quad bike on the front and the dogs just sit in the banana crate. Their job is just to pick up the, the scent of someone having breached the fence during the night. If you find tracks and the tracks are fresh enough, they call in the hounds. It's a three, three dog team of hounds that get released onto the tracks. But these dogs can run at 30, 40 kilometers an hour. So the only way you can follow the dogs is to follow them with a the helicopter. As the dogs are getting close, uh, then they try and catch up to the poachers, then the Melanoise will get released uh, with the intention of making the poachers think twice about coming here a second time. <laughs> poachers all are armed. They all carry a large caliber weapon. Some of the poachers also carry assault rifles. Once, you, once they get close to the poachers, you want to actually protect the dogs because these dogs, they're quite easy that they could get stabbed or get hit with an ax or even get shot. So that's what the Melanoise are for. The Melanoise will then be to basically physically wrestle the poacher to the ground and then the field rangers will hopefully then come in and physically arrest them. In the food store, brands have donated food for these incredible canines. This too is a learning process. So we use Akana, Hills, and we also have a thing called Montegro. So we have three different types of feed are being, being used to see how the dogs perform on the, on the different types of nutrition. So we use all these opportunities to find out what's best for the dogs, because at the end of the day we want the best nutrition for our dogs to catch those poachers as effectively and as quickly as possible. 
Over the years, selective breeding has given each of these dog breeds special attributes. In the next few weeks, they'll be showing just how effective they can be in the war against poaching. The situation at the moment, we're losing a rhino or two, maybe sometimes three rhino every day, and that situation is definitely not sustainable. For more about the Southern African Wildlife College and ways in which you can support it, please go to wildlifecollege.org.za. And for more information about Aimpoint, go to aimpoint.com. Well, here's wishing the dog unit every success. And as we said, we have some very cool stuff from the school coming up in Field Sports Africa. Now I am indebted to viewer Mike Self, who was appalled to find that David has been moonlighting for the organ of the CPSA, Pull Magazine. Here is the offending picture. Thank you, Mike. And here is the original, David, with the Field Sports Channel news stump. <laughs> This is Field Sports Channel News. A government scheme in Scotland has won an award for increasing caper Cayley numbers without shooting foxes. Government scientist Kenny Cortland says that the caper Cayley numbers are up because predators in the National Forest Estate in Straths Bay control each other and he would like to see a ban on predator control extended to the rest of Scotland. New Zealand plans to eradicate rats, stoats and possums by 2050. The government will use a mix of fences, traps, baits, poisons and what it calls new technologies. Introduced predators kill about 25 million native birds a year. Hunting animals is just like playing golf, says Donald Trump. The US presidential candidate Donald Trump praised his sons Donald Jr and Eric, who are keen big game hunters. A man has died after an accidental discharge at a clay pigeon club. Reports say the man in his 60s, who has not been named, was shooting at a club near Downpatrick in County Down. These pictures show emergency services arriving at the club next to Loch Money. The UK averages fewer than one death per year in shooting sports accidents. Are you going to the game fair at Ragley Hall this weekend? If you're there on Friday, Charlie will be chairing a debate in the Game Fair Theatre about the future of shooting starting at 11.30 a.m. No snoring at the back. For more about the Game Fair, go to thegamefair.org.uk. Staying with the Game Fair, and it's been endorsed by a leading light in the horse world. Olympic show jumping gold medalist Nick Skelton is based near Alcester, near Ragley Hall, and he's looking forward to the show. This year they have show jumping, which is great. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful place to have a, a show. It's a pity we can't have a, you know, like a, a major show there because it's a great setting and venue and um, it would be great for our sport. <laughs> My sons, they go shooting. Um, they're in the question in the racing game. I mean, if they're here, they'll probably be going to the game fair. Yeah, they all enjoy it, country life. Here's a quick shout out to our own Matt Kirk's seven-year-old daughter, Lily May, who caught her first fish on her first fly last week. That's it. No, he's all right. He's all right. That's it. Keep doing like I showed you. According to eyewitnesses, it was tied from her father's very own impressive whiskers. Well done, family Kirk. And finally, a crazed swan has smashed up eight model boats worth up to £15,000 each on a lake in Suffolk. The bird beats up ducks, geese and radio-controlled boats that move into its territory at Needham Lake near Needham Market. One of the boating enthusiasts from Gipping Valley Model Boat Club has written to the Queen, who owns all the nation's swans, to ask her to remove this cob. You are up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And if you're going to the game fair, I'll see you there. Next up, wildfowling top tips. ever used duck decoys particularly on a uh, in a tidal foreshore environment you'll know that there are a number of special problems that uh, that go with it when it's in the bag and it's kind of you know jumping about what inevitably happens is that the lead weight comes off from around the decoys neck 
they flap around in the bag and they end up getting knotted to each other. So I kind of came up with this idea the other day, which is a simple lead weight. And instead of being connected direct to the line, it's got a fairly substantial cable tie between the two, as you see there. But the beauty of that is that I can just drape it over the decoy's head and then when that is, uh, is placed inside the bag, it can jump and joggle around as much as you like. It doesn't fall off and it means that the next time you take the decoys out of the bag, you haven't got this huge bird's nest of, of entangled lead weights uh, and lines. Now, this decoy has got approximately nine feet of line on it which is obviously uh, sort of commensurate with the, with the depth of the water that the decoy has to float in. Now the problem with that is that if it's in nine feet of water, at, at some point I have to retrieve it. So here's a suggestion for you. A lead weighted throwing line, nothing novel with that. I'm sure that you contemplated using something like that yourself. But here's a thought for you. If you just hold the rope uh, in, in your hands and it's a soft piece of rope, soft rope knots very easily. This stiffer, um, blue polypropylene stuff. It's got almost no memory uh, and it's very difficult to knot it when you throw it. So, splice the large loop in the end, over your head, around your arm, and that means that I now no longer have to hold this end of the rope when I'm preparing to launch it. And what I'm going to be doing is throwing it in such a way that the lead weight goes over the decoy line. I'm not aiming for the decoy, I'm just aiming to foul the line itself. And, okay, first one for the camera. We'll just get the weight of it. A little bit more enthusiasm this time, I think. There we go. And that's hooked over the decoy or over the decoy line. Of course, on a flat surface like this, it won't work, but you can see the principle. Once I've snagged that, I can simply pull the whole thing back into the shore, repeat that with the other decoys, and it's a method of retrieving decoys that are too far out to safely uh, retrieve because the tide is, uh, is in the way. Thank you, Nick. Now from a marsh in the south of England to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Viewer Robert Helliwell sends in the Longthorn Guns Factory film that's just out on YouTube. Longthorn is a new English gunmaker from Lancashire that launched its first gun at the CLA Game Fair at Ragley Hall in 2010. It's now based in Northamptonshire. Rifle maker Zawa has brought out a tearjerker of a film about the emotion involved in hunting. Two men talk through a chamois stalk in the Bavarian Alps with lots of slow-mo. Thanks to viewer Nelson Freeman for this three-year-old film which I hadn't seen. El Crespo luxury partridge hunting in Spain pushed the boat out about its partridge shooting south of Madrid. Givendale Spaniels has a young dog called Midge on her first day decoying pigeons. It's a head cam video. I like the painted plastic milk bottle pigeon decoys. It's pigeon shooting US style next. We are in Minnesota for a three-man state record hunt. Based in New Zealand, South Island, wild places wild game is after wild pigs. It's a fun day out for four people and their dogs. To Canada where hunting Unlimited is after coyotes in northern Alberta. Beautiful filming, fabulous country and some great decoying, though they could work on the shooting. And finally, Gamekeeper John has brought out a new film about rabbit hunting with catapults. The man is a master with a catty. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please go to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about this show Field Sports Britain it's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday and this has been Field Sports Britain good hunting good shooting good fishing and goodbye